Everything I'm going to say is my opinion. Nobody else is responsible for it. In other words, I'm not speaking for the National Board of Pacifica or the local board. Just speaking for myself, in case I say anything really off the wall. My name is Grace Aaron. I'm on the local station board of KPFK with Jan Goodman and Mansoor and a bunch of other people here. I'm also on the Pacifica National Board. I have my cheat sheet here. Uh, the Pacifica uh, Radio nonprofit owns five radio stations, one in New York, one here in, in uh, LA, one in Berkeley, one in Houston, and one in Washington, Washington DC. We also have about 200 affiliated stations that carry some of our programming, and we also own a historical archive uh, that has programming all the way from the inception of Pacifica Radio back in the late 40s. So Pacifica is very unique because it doesn't take any corporate sponsorship whatsoever. This gives it great freedom to broadcast information in the public interest without influence or censorship. Having a strong popular media outlet is really essential to political and social movements. That's why we need to preserve it. Um, you know, some people say that radio is no longer relevant, and uh, that's only partially true. Statistics tell us that terrestrial radio is still extremely relevant because it reaches over 90% of the population weekly. The only other media source that has more penetration is TV. Internet listenership has only about 15% penetration. That gives you an example. Radio, 90%. Internet, 15%. Podcasting reaches only 2-3% to of the public. It's true that inter internet media and podcasts are increasing in popularity, but it'll be many years before radio and TV lose their dominance. Besides, it's the content that's important. The audience that listens online, that listens through broadcasts, are mainly listening to shows that were originally broadcast on radio or TV. So if we have great content, it'll be podcast, it'll be listened to on the internet, so, uh, you know, there's not a competition. Radio is still, and Pacific is still very relevant. And uh, KPFK and Pacifica are an extremely valuable resource. The radio signal rights Pacifica owns are worth more than $140 million. Its station in New York, for instance, was recently valued at about $45 million. It would be nearly impossible to find the money to build such a media outlet for progressive thought from scratch. I mean, that's a huge amount of money to try to raise. So what's the problem? Pacifica has been declining in listenership and revenue slowly over a period of at least 10 to 15 years. This has led to a depletion of resources and accumulation of debt. Luckily, Pacifica's assets still greatly surpass its debt. Uh, Pacific owns three pieces of real estate that house three stations. This real estate is worth between 10 and 11 million. This is over and above the value of its signal licenses that I mentioned earlier. Pacifica's total debt is around 8 million and much of that can be deferred for years. Through its five stations that I mentioned earlier, Pacifica has the, the ability to reach a huge chunk of the U.S. population. Our affiliates also are all over the country. They reach into red state areas that desperately need independent media. If it improves its programming and listenership, Pacifica has the potential to be a major force for public good. Increased audience will provide the revenue to increase its internet presence and branch out into other alternative and social media platforms as well as video broadcasting. If we're strong enough, we can acquire a Sirius XM station that will increase our penetration into the nooks and crannies of the country as well as more major population areas, Canada, uh, 
the uh, the uh, other nations, Central and South America, Europe. We already have quite as a, 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 an established internet listenership in other areas of the world and of the country. But let's face it, Pacifica needs to be rebuilt. As mentioned earlier, its listenership and revenue have been declining. The first thing we needed to do was avert bankruptcy. I'll explain. A terrible contract was signed about 12 years ago with the Empire State Building that obligated Pacifica to high rents and license fees for housing our tower that allows us to broadcast in New York City. This contract had escalating rent fees and penalties. And this was not particularly the fault of the, the station itself, of WBAI. It's been faulted, but this contract was signed by a director from uh, uh, our DC station, WPFW, over 12 years ago, and uh, Ambrose Lane, who's no longer with us. And that was a national board decision. It was not a WBAI decision or mistake, and not a, exclusively anyway. Because we were in arrears on our payments uh, that we were obligated to under this contract, the Empire State Realty Trust was awarded a summary judgment against Pacifica for $1.8 million. This gave them the ability to seize assets if we couldn't pay. We became even further in debt to them to the point where we owed over $3 million. Without reserves to pay this debt, Pacifica was in crisis. Bankruptcy was seriously considered. However, bankruptcy has many downsides. Because our assets exceed all of our debts, no reduction in our debt would be possible in bankruptcy. The forced sale of assets would have occurred in bankruptcy to satisfy creditors. What would most likely have happened was that most of our buildings would have to have been sold. These are the buildings that hold, house our stations to pay off our debt. The high cost of bankruptcy, estimated at $750,000 to a million dollars, would have caused an added burden. Thanks to efforts spearheaded by a number of us in Los Angeles, instead of filing bankruptcy, Pacifica mortgaged its real estate and, became, and came to a very advantageous agreement with the Empire State Realties Trust that has saved us, by my estimation, at least $3 million. Bravo. Mm -hmm. Yes. We not only paid all of our debts to ESRT, we also were released from our contract with them, which would have run for another three years at 60000 to 70000 per month. That was the burden we were under. We were able to negotiate a contract with another transmitter site for a much reduced monthly amount and very modest increases in rent of about 3%. Backing up a little bit, earlier efforts here in LA started us in the right direction. A few years ago, a number of us realized that the governance of Pacifica needed to be improved. The Pacifica National Board members literally own this media nonprofit. Uh, this board is composed of elect elected representatives from, five, from its five stations. I think Jan uh, explained that a little bit, but I'll explain it. There are elections, in fact, there are going to be uh, elections happening soon, within the next few months. Uh, there are elections for local station board members, and then the local station boards elect members of the national board. And the national board members can sell assets, uh, uh, go into binding contracts, with lawyers, with, with, uh, with uh, real estate, with all kinds of things. So the National Board has control of this entire thing, the five stations, the affiliate network, the archives. So the National Board is very important because it basically owns the whole network. So the local station boards uh, are elected by the membership. You have to be a member at $25 a year. You have they to don't be own them, they operate <laughs> Well, okay, so the National Board operates. Okay. The lawyer. Very Sorry. good. Sorry. That's why I say That's don't blame. Say, don't have these intellectual elites in here correcting every single song. And song. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's why I did the disclaimer at the beginning of this, this talk. 
<laughs> so anyway, a few years ago, a bunch of us got together to find and support well-qualified candidates who would provide better stewardship to KPFK and Pacifica. Our efforts were amazingly successful. Our slate of candidates won 70% and 67% respectively of the available seats in the last two elections. I think it was 70% in 2015 election and 67% in the 2017 election, which is really amazing with single transferable voting and the way our, our voting me uh, method works. It was a group effort. Many people were involved. By the way, the first thing we did was improve the management of KPFK. Mm -hmm. And we, and we literally stopped the rapid decline of our station, in my opinion. I want to acknowledge some facts. of... It's true. It's true. Okay, Jan <laughs> says it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, right. Objectively true. <laughs> I want to acknowledge some of the, those efforts now. Jan Goodman and her husband, Jerry Manperl, had a lot to do with our success. It's been a long struggle. Jan and Jerry helped get the elections to happen in the first place by supporting a legal action to force the elections to be conducted. That's how far we had to go. We actually had to take this foundation to court to force elections. Don't forget, uh, election, there was an attempt to uh, not hold elections and the, the same stewardship, the governance of Pacifica, that was uh, trying to, do, to not hold elections had uh, essentially lost $3 million in corporation for public broadcast funding for Pacifica because of poor stewardship, basically. And that is failing to get our financial house in order because the Corporation for Public Broadcasting wouldn't look at us for funding because we didn't have our tax returns done, we didn't have our audits done, audits are required every year. Anyway, so, so, uh, so Jan and Jerry spearheaded an effort to force uh, Pacifica to hold elections, which we, we got the election. They helped with fundraising efforts, including opening up their home to events as they're doing today. Uh, Jan serves on the national board and local board with me. And we put in many, many hours of work on those boards, and it's hard work. It's like, well, you know. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, you know, it's fighting. It's like, you know, I don't know how to explain it. A war movie. That's what it's like. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Jerry started an effort to get supporters of Pacifica to lend Pacifica money at reduced interest rates. This greatly helped in our settlement negotiations. It was really crucial to have that available. I don't think we could have c accomplished the settlement with Empire State if it weren't for Jerry's efforts mainly. Uh, Mansour Sabak, who, who's our videotaper, he uh, also serves on the local and national boards and with us also helped enormously to gain support as programmers at the station for our election efforts. He's put in a lot of time and effort. Uh, Jonathan Alexander, who's not here today, but he's another KPFK representative on the national board who also helps a great deal. King Riley over here did an enormous Woo! amount of work <laughs> in the two election campaigns. He helped plan educational and fundraising appeals and events, kept track of supporters, helped recruit candidates, nagged me to death, answered questions members had about the elections. Kept track of supporters, recruit, recruited candidates, answered questions members had about the elections, and helped structure the supporters loan. That was a key part in the settlement package with the SRT. Um, I want to also acknowledge Ed Pearl, who's sitting right here. He's also helped enormously. Raise your hand, Ed, so everybody knows who you are. <laughs> Not only in the two uh, recent elections I mentioned, but also in a number of past elections. He maintains a news email subscription service that goes out to a large number of local progressives. You may have heard about this event from his list, I don't know. He has graciously helped us send out election and other information to this list, which has been crucial in our election success for many, many years. 
Uh, he also served for years on our local station board years ago. He's not on the board currently, but he, he did uh, serve. So, uh, and other people who have helped in the same sort of way by getting out the word for us were Jackie Goldberg. She's sent our information out to her email list. And Penn of the Progressive Email Network. Is Penn here? Right here. Penn. Oh, okay. Yeah, the People's Email Network. Oh, People's Email Network. Okay, thank you for uh, correcting me. So, Penn of the Progressive Email Network. People's Email Network. I'm sorry. Let me interrupt. How many subscribers do you have? Nationally, about half a million. Whoa. That's amazing. Amazing. The People's Email Network. Okay. And if we were interested in it, how would we find it? The website is utalk.us. The letter U T A L K dot U.S. U talk dot U.S. People's Email Network. U talk dot U.S. Thank you. So we greatly appreciate that type of help because this is all like you know a people effort. Um, I want to also thank my husband Ken Aaron. Raise your hand, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's on our local station board. He created our slate mailer. I'll show you, you know, in, in a number of elections. This is what it looks like. I think it's very beautiful. Here's another one. Uh, I have some extras of these that you can you can look at more closely. What we do is we. Uh, well, I'll, I'll explain that a little later. But he's done this, and he's also put together a website for us for the election that gives a, a lot of information. Ken, who's, who's oh, this? Ken, yeah, yes? Who, yeah, who, who did that again? Ken Aaron, my husband. Uh -huh. He's up there. He's on the local station board of KPFK right. with me and with Jan. We, ha we serve on the local board and also on the national board. And... Uh, uh, he's also the treasurer of KPFK, which is another, another. Uh, he, it's much appreciated, Ken. And he put up a Facebook page, or a Twitter account, and all those things, and maintains those. Um, the endorser, well, I want, want to also thank the endorsers of our candidate slates in 2015 and 2016, such as Roy Tuckman, Ian Masters, Lila Garrett. Lila's there. Thank you, Lila. And uh, Harvey Wasserman, and he, he's waving in the back. And who else? Anyway, and Henry Slucky. Who also? Right. Yes. The program on yes, and who who is an endorser? And uh, and also, I want to acknowledge the local station board members who are here, and all of the local station board members. Charles Fredericks served on our local station board. He's not on currently, but I hope he'll he'll uh, run again. Uh, Stephen John, Franz. pardon me. I said Stephen oh, Stephen Franz, Franz. and Lance. I'm looking around there. Myla. Oh, Lance Simmons. Lance is back. Myla Reason. John was our secretary. Charles, I mean uh, 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 Steve Kaiser in the back. He was at the front door taking your names. So it's it's John Gary is here, Gary is here and, and John was the secretary of the LSB. That's a lot of hard work. He's not on the LSB. I don't think you've ever been on the LSB, have you, John? No, but he was the secretary, which is a lot of work. Much appreciated. How many years were you the secretary? Five. Amazing. Okay. Now he's the shadow secretary. Okay. <laughs> Historic memory. Yes. And Fred. And Fred. we have Fred Player, of course. Stand up, Fred. Fred has, has, was on the board for at least six years. He was on so long he was termed out after six years. Seven. Okay, seven years. He was the treasurer. He was the chair of the audit committee years ago. And we're going to rope him into running again, I think, because... And he, and he also... Runs elections. I mean, yes, he elections. does. He 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 is Very the he, he streams a lot of our meetings. Our teleconferences are streamed on the internet, and uh, Fred does a lot of volunteer work to help stream those meetings. It's a lot of work, he and he the audio for our he he records the audio for a lot of our meetings. 
and he has helped to tally elections for us. There are internal elections like who will be on which committee, that kind of thing. So he's been an amazing volunteer for many years. And he was the treasurer of KPFK and the chair of the audit committee. And uh, Ken is, 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 is making faces at me that I should move on, so I will. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's not all. Our election, candidate recruitment, and fundraising efforts didn't end with just KPFK. We also reached out to other stations and we helped with their campaigns. We told them, what, because we were so successful here, we shepherded the other stations and Ken actually put together this kind of slate mailer for KPFT, this one, where is it? This, this type of slate mailer for KPFT and also put together a whole website for them, for their election. And we also did a little bit of fundraising for their elections. We nagged them and nagged them until they recruited candidates. So, because it's not, we, we can, uh, you know, win here at KPFK, but it's the whole national board that can sabotage our efforts if there are not enough good people on those. So, so we work across the network. And King has really spearheaded that to a great degree. And um, let's see what else. Um, I want to also say that the supporters, there were, there's a, was a crucial part of the mortgages we got on our buildings. And that was a, an extra $500,000 was needed. There, there's a lot of complexity, but the supporters' lenders were really crucial, as I said, in the settlement with the Empire State Building. And uh, those lenders were mainly from Southern California. I mean, Jerry spearheaded that. And there, I want to really thank those lenders. I don't want to name them, although I know there are a couple in this room, but if you'd like to raise your hand and get applause, I, I don't want to out you if you don't want to be. <laughs> but uh, if you'd like to raise your hand just because you did that wonderful thing, you may. Okay. We have <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll and Sherry, of course, was a major person. And um, thank you for putting up with all the aggravation, Jerry. I know how horrible it was. Where do we go from here? Uh, first, we need to fix our financial reporting. Delinquent financial reporting and just declining listenership led to the loss of about $3 million in corporation for public broadcast funding. We wouldn't have been at this crossroads with regarding bankruptcy if we had had that $3 million. We wouldn't have had our backs against the wall. <coughs> Uh, getting that funding back would be a very, very important thing because that would get us over the hump. So we need to get our financial reporting uh, up to date. The good news about that uh, is that uh, the 2016 audit is done. Uh, the audit committee is just about ready in a matter of days to hire another audit firm to start the 2017 audit. Which is as close to current as we've been in years and years and yes, years. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I want to also give a shout out to me and to Jan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, great. I'll tell you why. Now, don't clap before you know why. The two of us reached out to two women on the National Board from WPFW in Washington, D.C. The four of us worked together to hire an extremely well-qualified interim executive director, Tom Livingston. Tom has a search firm that provides executives for nonprofit media concerns. We also contracted with his firm to search for a permanent executive director. The four of us provided the leadership that resulted in the hire just last week of a CPA firm to take over our failing financial infrastructure. You know, look, if we keep failing to get it done in-house, let's get it done out of house, at least for a while. You know, let's have fresh eyes look at this mess and get it fixed. The 2016 audit is complete, as I mentioned. It's public. It gives detailed financial information that can be read by anyone. Where? It's, it's posted at the, on the Pacifica website. That's uh -huh. www.pacifica.org. That'll give you a real uh, uh, a real snapshot. Well, actually, it's a very detailed. It gives the finance, finances for 2016, but it also has an update. 
but that's what auditors do. So it, it, it has uh, some degree of an update up till the present. Uh, we are, as I said, we're just days away from hiring another audit firm. So the fact that Jan and I and two other women from the East Coast got all of this accomplished with better management, it just shows the power of, of, of uh, talented women, I think. So, you know, a shout out to, to the Year of the Woman. Yeah. Thank you. So how do we fix Pacifica so it's stable and secure? First of all, our stations need programming improvement. This will boost listenership, which will, in turn, boost revenue, providing the research uh, resources to expand. We need a Pacifica station in Chicago, for instance. We need an internet best of Pacifica radio station that can morph into a Sirius XM station. Of course, we need to also do more major donor fundraising, advertising, and public relations to promote our stations. In order to rebuild, strengthen, and expand KPFK and Pacifica, we need to work hard in the upcoming local station board election at KPFK and also help with the elections at our sister stations. There's been much talk about factions in Pacifica, but honestly, we just want to find as many qualified candidates as we can who care about the pre this precious resource and have the time to serve on these boards and use good judgment as board members. We don't swear people to loyalty or secrecy. We just want to pick honest, smart people with good intentions who can devote the time to serve on our local station board and, le uh, and elect good stewards for our national board for Pacifica. We hope some of you will become candidates. We hope some of you will help financially and also as volunteers. And that's the bulk of what I have to say.